What's going on guys? My name is Josh and in today's video we're going to be going over the best ways to rank up in Season 2 of Cold War. As you can see, I'm already level 272 and the season's been out for just over two weeks now. I get this question all the time in stream. How are you ranking up so fast? What are you doing? So I figured I'd take some time. We're going to go over what I think are the three best ways to rank up in Season 2. The ways we're going to be looking at are in multiplayer and in zombies as well. We're not going to be looking at Warzone today just because I don't play Warzone. So I don't know what the best ways to rank up in Warzone are. Like I said, we're going to be looking at multiplayer and zombies for the most part. If you guys enjoy the video, please leave a like. If you're new here, consider subscribing. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get right into the video. So the first thing to keep in mind is when you have the battle pass, it's going to give you an extra 10% XP. So just keep that in mind. If you don't have the battle pass, all these methods will still be the same. But having that battle pass does give you more XP. Also, the really important thing when wanting to level up fast is make sure you take advantage of double XP weekends. Double XP weekends will amplify everything. Obviously, it's two times. You're getting more XP that way. So if you see one coming up, Maybe take, you know, save yourself some time where you can play a little bit more. It'll help you level up so much faster and you want to play as much. So the first method we're going to be looking at today starts in multiplayer. And this is playing hardcore Nuketown 24-7. The reason I recommend playing this game mode, especially in hardcore, is because hardcore gives you more XP for every kill because you're getting one shot, one kills. And with Nuketown being one of the smallest maps in the game you can play, you're going to be getting as many kills as possible in a short amount of time, which is really going to boost the amount of XP that you're getting. Also, it's very important to keep in mind when doing this that you want to make sure you're playing every match out and getting that match XP bonus because that will add a lot to your XP. So keeping that in mind, we're going to look at three games that I played on Hardcore Nuketown 24-7. We're going to be looking at the XP, the time in each game, and then the XP per minute. And we're going to average all those out to see what the actual average XP per minute is for Nuketown 24-7. So starting in game one, we did pretty well. We completed the game with going 61 and 28 and hardcore kill confirmed. Over that game, we got 27,000 XP, but 10,000 XP of that came from challenges, so we took that away. So we got an average XP of 1,510 per minute. In game two, we also did pretty well. We went 30 and 13. This time it was on TDM, so the game was much faster. And that game, we ended up getting an average XP of 1,655 per minute. Game three, also did pretty decent. We went 50 and 11 on kill confirmed and got an XP per minute of 1,740. So over these three games, we average 1,635 XP per minute. And this includes from the very start of like when the game is starting to when you get back to the lobby. So as you can see, multiplayer is a great way to level up. However, there are a couple things that suck about multiplayer and some big cons with it. One of those being that your games aren't gonna be consistent. So you'll have some games where you're doing really well and other games where you're not doing so well. And so this, if you're having a lot of a streak where you're not doing really well, your XP per minute is gonna come down. So like, as I said, these games I did here, I only did three games to average this out. So if you're doing well most of your games and you're doing really consistently, then you're gonna be getting a lot of XP, you're gonna be ranking up fast. But if you're not as good at multiplayer and you don't get a lot of kills each game, then you're gonna get less XP and then maybe some other methods may be better to level up quickly. So now we're going to be moving into zombies, which I find a little bit better for getting XP because there's a lot less variability in the XP you're getting per game. Just because everything seems to be a little bit more consistent, you don't have to worry about doing really good each game. So the first method we're going to be looking at is the round 10 exfil. And I recommend doing this on D machine. First of all, because the map is the fastest, you have the fastest spawns on D machine. And you can really fly through the exfil rounds. And for this method, you're going to be going to round 10. Like I said, you're going to be chilling up at the penthouse for the entire time, running out and exfilling. And this takes about 11 minutes per game, so it's very quick. And in that amount of time, I got 16,000 XP. And this is without any other challenges as well, including that. So then we're going to be looking at, for this strat, we're going to end up doing is you're going to stay in round or in spawn until round two. And then at round two, you're going to open the door to the left and go up to the penthouse, where you will stay at the penthouse the entire time. You can run Ring of Fire, use that as you need. You're also going to be running the Hauer 77 shotgun. It is the best shotgun. You will be perfectly fine with this thing throughout the entire time. And you're going to sit there, get your kills till round 10. When round 10 comes, you're going to run back down to spawn. You're going to grab the death machine from the workbench, and then you're going to exfil. This exfil should be pretty easy. Hopefully, keep in mind, you want to keep your ring of fire charged from when you go for the exfil. Then once you get there, pop your ring of fire, pop your death machine, and you'll be able to mow down all the zombies. Luckily, at this point, because you don't have power on, it's only round 10. You're not going to have any megatons come at you during this exfil. So this exfil should be pretty easy. Hit the exfil. Make sure you get that out. That'll give you a nice bonus. And then this will give you about 1,467 XP per minute during the strategy. Obviously, if you're a little bit slower, you're going to get less. If you're a little bit faster, you're going to get a little bit more XP per minute. This is overall a really good strategy. Super easy to do, especially if you don't have a lot of time. If you only have, let's say, like 30 minutes to sit down to play, you don't have enough time to get into a really long game. You can just knock this out. You'll get a good amount of XP. You'll get about half a level of XP, which is really nice. And if you're running double XP, of course, that would be a full level. So it's a super easy way to level up, and it takes no time at all.
The next method we're going to be looking at is the round 30 exfil, which is basically the same thing as the round 10 exfil, except you're just going to round 30. However, this one is a little bit harder because, you know, you have to open up the map. It will slow you down a little bit. And, you know, going to round 30, the zombies are going to be a little bit stronger. But keep this in mind, over round 30, we got 65,000 XP throughout this game. And it took us 37 minutes to complete the game. So obviously it was a little bit longer. So it takes a little bit more time to do this, but it's still very quick. You can get it done in, uh, you know, 37 minutes. Pretty quick game of zombies. And so what you're going to do for this strategy is you're going to do the exact same thing that you do in the round 10 expo. So you're going to go up to the penthouse and sit in the penthouse until round 10. After you finish round 10, you're going to open the map. Now what you want to do if you're trying to be as efficient as possible is you're going to finish off round 10 and then open the map while the zombies are spawning in and kill zombies while you're turning on power. Also at this time, you should have enough to be able to get your gun to at least pack a punch one. You can get the pack a punch two if you really save your points. And you can also get it up to the green tier. Also, at this point is when you're going to buy yourself. Make sure you buy Jug and Cook Revive. And I also recommend getting Speed Cola. If you have enough points and you don't want to get Pack 2, you could get Deadshot as well just to make your gun do more damage that way. You also want to make sure while you're upgrading your gun that you're killing as many zombies as possible so you can keep moving the rounds along. Because we are trying to be as efficient as possible and get to the rounds as quickly as we can. Also, at this time, as soon as you have your stuff upgraded, you're going to go right back up to the penthouse and stay there. And you're gonna stay there until about round 20. Round 20, you will get the Wonder Fist to spawn in and you'll get the portals. So at that point, you wanna run back down to the into the pack a punch area. You're gonna get your gun up to purple tier. And then you need to get it to at least pack two. If you have enough for pack three, you can go for it. But pack two is perfectly fine. And at that point, as soon as you have that, go right back up to the penthouse, continue with moving the rounds along. You also have the perk machine, the Wonder Fizz right behind you now, so you can buy all your perks, the rest of the perks that you need throughout the rest of the rounds. And at this point, you're just going to continue moving the round along, killing as many zombies as possible and going as quickly as you can. Of course, watch out for the Megatons because they're going to be spawning in as well. So make sure you're taking, you know, using your Ring of Fire when they come kill them. The shotgun as well will absolutely melt them, so that shouldn't be an issue. At this point, you're going to reach the round 30 expo, which you're going to do the exact same thing that you did for the round 10 expo. But you go back down, you're going to grab yourself the death machine. If you have enough points or enough scrap at this point, you should also buy monkey bombs and molotovs just to help, you know, manage the zombies and kill as many as quickly as you can. At this point, you're going to go do the round or the expo again, just like you would in the round 10 expo. This time, obviously, you're going to have the megaton come at you. So make sure you use death machine on him, get him split or use the shotgun to split him, then use the death machine. You should be able to wipe out all the zombies. Make sure you're using your monkey bomb and then throwing the Molotov on the monkey bomb to wipe out all of the zombies. This exploit shouldn't be too difficult and just make sure you get it done. Uh, you can also continue doing the strategy past round 30, but round 30 is the maximum points you're going to get for an exfil. So if you're trying to be as efficient, this is the round you need to stop on and exfil. However, you don't have to exfil at this point. You can keep playing, which moves us on into our bonus method, which is the round 100 exfil. Now with the round 100 exfil, it's not going to be as efficient as the other methods. But it still works out really, really well. You're going to get a ton of XP because you're going to be playing for a long time. So with the round 100, it's going to take you anywhere between two and a half to three and a half hours. But you're going to get a ton of XP. So in my game, it took me just at three hours. And during this time, I got 280,000 XP for an XP per minute of 1,517, which is still very competitive with the other methods with the round 10 being 1,400 and the round 30 being 1,600. So it still is a very good method. Also, as a strategy, of course, it is going to take a long time. So most people aren't going to have time to sit down and do a round 100, which is perfectly OK. So I recommend for the most part, stick with the, sticking with the round 30. But if you can go for the round 100 for this method, also, too, I recommend having on YouTube or having on Netflix, something like that to watch while you're playing, because round 100s can get pretty boring, especially if you're doing a lot of them. So just keep that in mind. Obviously, this method is a little bit harder. Round 100 is not an easy task. But if you're good at zombies and you play a lot, it's a great way to get a ton of XP in a single game. And you're going to rank up a ton off of this. So out of all these methods, the one I think that is the best is the round 30 exfil. You get a ton of XP. It's very competitive with the multiplayer average that I had. But it's very, very consistent. You don't have to deal with the randomness that is multiplayer. And it's zombies, so it's a lot of fun anyways, just as it is. Obviously, you can't do this with friends. It's going to help you level up even faster. But this is by far the best method if you're going for pure speed on ranking up. However, I do recommend doing all these methods together at the same time because all these methods work really, really well. They're all pretty similar in the amount of XP they give. And by doing all the methods, you give yourself a variety in gameplay so you're not doing the same thing over and over again. You're going to prevent the chances of you burning out and getting completely bored and quit playing. So like I said, you want to try to do all these methods if you can. The round 30 being the best in terms of XP and the amount you're going to get. Hardcore multiplayer is also still really good as well. Like I said, all these methods work really well together. You're going to get a ton of XP and just make sure if you can play during your double XP weekends and that will help you level up like crazy in Cold War Season 2. And that's all I have for you guys today in this video. Those are the best ways to rank up in Season 2 of Cold War. 
If you guys enjoyed the video, please leave a like. If you want to, consider subscribing. And I will see you in the next one. Peace.